Imagine it's 1400 years ago. It's the 9th of Muharram. You're in your tent and at night you hear noises from outside. So you come outside to see what's going on and you see people leaving the camp of Imam Hussain salam in the hundreds and thousands. Looking around for a split second, your eyes fall into the eyes of Imam Hussain salam. You see the sadness and sorrow in his face and you decide you're going to stay. You're not going to leave him alone. The morning comes, it's now the day of Ashura. And imagine you walk up to the Imam to offer him your service and he lets you decide what you want to do on that day. Where would you go? What would you want to do? Well, I would probably like I'll just I would ask him. I'll ask the Imam and see what he wants me to do. I'll try help in any way. Anything. But if I had to pick, I'll probably go and try assist Abel Fadl Abbas with bringing the water to the children. Because just seeing how, seeing the tragedy of Abu Fadl Abbas, seeing how he left, he left, the, he didn't go and fight during the battle. He went to get water for the kids from six months old, two years old, and like just li really young children. From how he took an arrow to his eye and his arms got chopped off. Maybe I could have been there to shield the arrow. Maybe I could have taken the arrow. Now imagine you come home one day from school, you open the house door, you walk in, you see your family running around the house, everyone's busy with something, your mum's making food, your dad's making fruit, someone else is making tea and it looks to you as if you've got guests who have come to your house. So you ask someone, you say, who's come to see us? And they reply, they haven't come to see us, they've come to see you. So you think to yourself, who could it be? Maybe it's someone from school, maybe it's someone from the mosque, maybe it's someone from down the road. And you go into the living room, you open the door and you see sitting in your living room is Imam Hussain alayhi salam. In that moment, what would you say to him? What would you want him to say to you? I'll, I'll go on my knees. I'll be speechless. I'll probably tell him if I could have been there on the day of Ashura to be beside him, how would he have wanted me to help? I'll ask for forgiveness for any sins that I've, I've done, anything that has happened. What would you want him to say to you? I'm not sure. Would you want him to say, I've accepted you as a servant? Would you want him to tell you about 
your future. I would want him to give me advice for the right path. To guide me. At the beginning, <clears throat> I asked you about 1400 years ago. I asked you about a day that at least we have a bit of information on that with hindsight we could maybe say if I was there I would stop this or if I was there I would help with that or if I was there I could maybe potentially delay this tragedy from happening and in this day and age a lot of us forget that we have a 12th Imam who's with us and like the start when I said to you, you walk up to the Imam and the Imam gives you a choice in this day and age our Imam, at least being physically absent from us, gives us the choice in how we want to serve him. So what do you think you've done for the 12th Imam, what do you think he deserves from you? Well, I would just want to be on the right side with the Imam be with him. I don't think we've done much really because seeing what's happening, what's going on around, there aren't much majalis for the young children, people my age, we don't really get taught that much. We don't really get told the stories of the Emma or anything like that. We just like, we don't get educated about Imam al-Mahdi, Ajallah. And that's it. Probably more Majalis. And that's it. أين بقية سلاط؟ أين بقية سلاط؟ أين بقية سلاط؟ على كراز خداي خدا كلاد كبيا خدا سنور غير نوائب خدا کند